on in the limelight, but these decks have been on and off the main stage since their release, and a lot has changed, though, about this matchup with some, some key cards and changing, but DTE Mew versus Garatina, a few things to look out for, but really, one card that stands in my mind right away. Both players are playing it, but it feels like Path to the Peak is a card that's going to have a lot more of an impact on Isaiah's side than on James's side. Certainly, there's not a lot that James can really shut down, right? There's the Raining Greninja, and that's pretty much it, but Isaiah shuts down James's whole engine. So it'll be interesting to see how James can uh, play around this, adapt to this. He is playing a high count of Lost Vacuum and also a copy of Town Store. So five Path to the Peak counters, that's a pretty solid amount. Lots indeed. Path is one of those cards that you can kind of just get rid of as if it were Battle VIP Path, sort of toss it away. And it will be really interesting to see how this hand opens up. The early game dynamic, I feel like, is one that's super important in this matchup because of both decks' sort of aggression, but more importantly, Mew DTE Mew specifically, having the strongest turn two, especially if it wins a flip first. Yeah, certainly. Um, going first is going to be pretty impactful for both players. Uh, they all reflipped. I don't know who is going first. I think we, we have a mulligan uh, in favor of James as well, as we have four players setting up. And I don't know, like, how would you rate, like, who would you favor this matchup? Taking away the path to the peak uh, dynamic, who do you think has, like, the, the advantage here between Mew and Giratina? I would 100% give it to Mew v Max. It's one of those decks that just, you kind of just pressure Giratina over and yeah. over again. and. With the combination of Psychic Leap hitting it with Cram, yeah, it's okay, but they can always just power tablet, get it out, bring a Mew VMAX up, and I mean, on paper, yes, a two prizer into a three prizer is not so good, uh, but the aggression of Mew VMAX, especially against a deck that wants to fall behind, it doesn't want to fall behind specifically in this matchup, Giratina Max. Now, nothing too big prized. The two Poke Gears can be a little detrimental to Isaiah's consistency overall of the deck, but perhaps the Cramorant. The Cramorant getting a that hidden into the Mew V Max early on can help you set up for a lost impact hail, right? You do have Star Requiem to get a one shot, eliminate a Mew V Max, but taking that second KO is usually what Giratina struggles with. Looks like our players are set up and ready. Of course, five more Swiss rounds to go today. Players really looking to not just get to those 19 match points, but more than that, because I don't even know if 35 points will be set. Maybe 36 is bubble potentially for how many players we have so you need to win at least 11 12 games out of your 16 rounds to be able to advance to the top cut tomorrow that's a lot of wins and very very little margin for error for sure but i mean it's what you expect right these are the big tournaments if you're here to do well you have to win out a lot more than losing so 36 match points uh these players are definitely in the running though right off to an XO record and off to a great start here. Uh, will be Isaiah starting things off. Did top deck come fit? It's not a great feeling when uh, that is, of course, your optimal starting Pokemon, but gets it down nevertheless. And I think there is a switch card, but not much else going on in this hand. And this is a scary position to be in. Big flower selecting two cards. Is there a battle pass, some way to get Pokemon into play? There is a nest ball, it looks like. I feel like that has to be an instant grab. You don't really know what version of Mew you're playing against. And if it is that fusion, Meloetta is really not a card you want to play down in this matchup, but if it means taking a two prize knockout turn one, of course you're going to do it. Yeah, certainly. Now, I feel like we're going to see a, a thorough check here by Zaya on the prize cards, the energies, and the Pokemon being pulled to the front. He's going to find that that Cramorant is not available, but as you mentioned right now, his priority is finding a Colrus, right? Or getting close to one. The two Pokegears being prized could be problematic, but all four callers are available. So it's up to Isaiah. He will have two turns to really dig for that callers. Yeah, it's all going to be about Star Requiem, getting up to those 10 cards in the Lost Zone. It's the best attack you have in your deck, so you've got to play to your out. Now, there are a few options here to think about in terms of this uh, Nest Ball. Do you go for something like Radiant Greninja here and, and play along with that, assuming you have energy in hand, or is it really just getting down another Comfy or even getting another Giratina into play? Yeah, certainly. Double Giratina going to be very important. James will immediately try to target down uh, those Giratinas. They are the only threat, right? The Sableye spread damage, not really impactful. And Kramer not being available. So it's going to come down to all these Giratinas. But without Colrith, yeah. uh, the Giratinas don't even matter. So getting to 10, digging, 
perhaps establishing the Greninja and maybe Isaiah will end up delaying a little bit the path to a peak. I feel like path to a peak is at its best when it's combined with Roxanne. Mm. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. And another big thing too is we talk about path, right? Path, Roxanne. One thing I'm going to keep my eye on here for sure is we see another flower selecting come in, getting some more cards. Still Battle VIP Pass is a great card you want to find on your first turn. As I was saying, though, for James, it's can you preserve that V-Star power for as long as possible? Because in this matchup, it essentially, if you can have it be, is your guaranteed get-out-of-jail-free card from Path to the Peak. Yeah, for sure. No way to stop it. There's no lost vacuum by Isaiah, right, to eliminate that uh, V-Star. And that's always a goal with Mew. You know, that's always what you want to do. So James with a pretty strong hand, but also RNG dependent, I guess, a little bit, because there's two Cramomatics right there which, um, if you flip heads, yeah, James could end up with a very powerful board. But a couple tails flips, yeah, or there is an Ultra Ball as well. I feel like it's an important thing to do to balance between Ultra Balling away uh, your Chromatics to guarantee one Pokemon or the 50-50 chance mm. at two or zero. It's always a, a thing on players' minds to determine that. So James is setting up. Does have the one copy of Alessa Sparkle in hand. Not something we see typically in this deck, but that makes me think, Pablo, you are running those two Fusion Strike energy. You can't accelerate that. Is there ever a world where usually this DT Mew deck doesn't attack going first or going second on the first turn that you want to put these into play to maybe give yourself the opportunity to double turbo and play a power tablet and just start taking some prizes as quickly as possible? I mean, definitely powerful strategy against low HP things like Comfy, right? Or even Ralt. So having that option is pretty cool to, to see. And yeah, as you mentioned, we must specify, this is not the usual Fusion Strike Mew, right? There's only a single copy of Alyssa, two copies of Fusion Strike Energy as we see the heads flip. Very nice. And this will almost certainly grab Battle VIP Pass exactly what you want to play on the first turn of the game. And I mean, yeah, there are the two sides. Your opponent did just build up a pretty big hand using those flower selecting abilities, didn't play too much. So uh, there is, of course, Judge in this deck. And I think that's also a good supporter card, but uh, now really comes the choice. You did just get rid of one of those Lost Vacuum. It's a card you kind of want to keep around for as long as possible, and I don't really... I'm keeping the path to the peak, but I don't really know if that's a card that I'd necessarily value keeping around in this matchup. I agreed. I think that's uh, a little bit of a tunnel vision, right? My deck wants to judge path a lot and deny resources, but in the grand scheme of things, you're only denying Greninja, so I really would have loved to see that path go away. Play the Alessa Sparkle, maximize your Gen X, maximize your draw, and maybe sneak in a Psychic Leap KO on that Comfy. Yeah, Double Turbo did come down, so we'll require a Power Tablet. That's a really important resource in this matchup, right? You want to hit that magic 280 or 220 on the Giratina. You only have sort of a limited amount of uh, really oomph on your attacks here. There isn't really anything like the... Or is there even anything like Choice Belt in this deck? I'm not sure I see any... Wow, no no choice spell at all. Just playing the two copies of Box of Disasters. That is a card that is really, really exceptional against this Garatina matchup, and James will definitely be missing it here in this matchup. Yeah, really respecting Charizard, but you have to give up on something, right? You can't play more than 60 cards, therefore, whatever you end up choosing to play, it comes at a cost. And in the case of James, he's trying to protect against Spiritum, he's trying to protect against Charizard, and he's giving up a little bit of raw power against these V Pokemon, which... As we get new sets and more and more powerful Pokemon EX get released, I think it makes sense, right? Choice Belt was already like at a one-off count in Mew. Now we're seeing it at zero, perhaps. Yeah, I think it's a normal evolution of the progress of, of the metagame as sets are coming out. Mew's come a long way. It's evolved a lot. I remember <laughs> when this deck played Latios originally yeah. to, <laughs> to play things around. Well, we're in a big VMAX format, yeah, of course. Of yeah, of course. So lots of evolution, but... Uh, I think Mew will only go down until you cannot play it anymore for tournaments and uh, enjoying the limelight for the last few months that it has in the standard format. There is that important Forest Steel Zone. It does come down onto this Genesect and did also find a Judge. So that's a great supporter, especially seeing Alessa get discarded right away and will be the choice there for James. Isaiah holding on to the Colrus's experiment. So had the perfect supporter for next turn. Also had the V-Star. So... This will be a big turn for Isaiah. Can he get more Giratina down? But more importantly, can there be more cards in the Lost Zone to threaten potentially Lost Impact or even Star Requiem in the upcoming turns? Indeed, and I feel like James had a spare Battle VIP pass in his hand. <laughs> As a Mew player, whenever you have a spare Battle VIP pass on your first you're turn, you know, you know you're off to the races, right? Which is pretty fantastic. And yeah, 
have to see what Isaiah draws. I think his goal or his ideal would definitely be to bench two more Giratinas, right? Because mm. you know James is going to start being aggressive next turn. He's really like, he needs to retreat, right? He has a four seal stone. He still has one just like left over. He's going to end the turn with a solid hand. And Isaiah is under a lot of pressure, even though it's only been one turn for James. Great hand for next turn. UV Max DTE power tablet. And they finish it off with two more. Just find the town store. So, I mean, you've got pretty much everything you want next turn. Counter stadium, double power tablet, and yeah, it looks like James is going to pass. Did opt to set the board up with three Mew, three Genesec. Pablo, why is that so important against these Lost Zone decks? So, you always want to have the option to Psychic Leap, right? You want to be able to take off the three price Pokemon liability that you sometimes have, so your opponent can take a knockout on them and be able to win the game by knocking out two VMAX Pokemon, right? So, giving yourself that option. And, I mean, three Genesect is usually good enough, right? It's very rare when you really need to dig for all for all the time. So no Culver's here for Isaiah in this new hand. Does have Nest Ball. Garatina V queued up to the top of the deck, as we're talking about. So important to get these down, especially when you're playing against such an aggressive deck like Mew VMAX. And there's a few little sequencing things to think about. Raiding Greninja and energy cards in the hand, but... Can't stress it enough. It's all going to come down to can Isaiah find Chorus? Can Isaiah get these Garatina V Star evolved? Because the less HP they have, the easier they're knocked out. And the more power tablets you can save down the line, the more feasible it comes to later on in the game take those knockouts onto those V Stars. Indeed, very key. And um, I feel like if Isaiah isn't able to find that specific Chorus, he might be forced into an Abyss Seeking which is essentially a Colrus, right? One less card, but you get to see a Colrus, but then that would really save James the trouble of finding bosses hoarders and could actually take a knockout on one of those Giratinas combined with a Judge again. Concealed cards being used. Let's find that Jet Energy. That's going to be perfect either to allow another Comfey to Flower Select uh, or something else to go down. We will see another Jet Energy hit the Lost Zone, so up to three cards right now for Isaiah. Slowly building up to those milestones. Seven cards in the Lost Zone for Mirage Gate and ten cards in the Lost Zone for the Star Requiem. Did find the Colrus's Experiment off of that Flower Selecting. Let's find Garatina V-Star Path to the Peak. Some great additions to this hand. Getting this evolved, it's got to be your priority right away. But this is sort of the cost of Colrus every time. You see five good cards, two of them have to go away. Yeah, I think it's always important to note how... Um, when, when you talk to Pokemon players, right, they're always like, oh, the, the Lost Zone can be a little difficult to play because uh, you lost zone resources, right? Well, you're never going to play bad cards on purpose to lost sow them away, right? So that your call risk decision is easier. You're always, outside of the first turn, you're always going to see really good cards other than Battle VIP Pass. So these decisions are always very difficult sometimes. And um, building up to a Lost Zone is your priority, and you need to factor in the resources that you have lost along with the ones that you have available, and that's what usually will help you determine what to Lost Zone away. And a smart play for there from Isaiah. I mean, Path is an important card, but actually chose to take the third Comfey, and this shows his experiment, experience in this matchup, not valuing attacking at this point in the game with Cramoran and just saying, hey, I might not even attack, but if I can Flower Select in here, that's all I need. Yeah, I need to build this Lost Zone, right? That's the priority getting to 10, dealing with your Mew Max, and then hopefully lost impacting into another one and finishing off with either Greninja's attack, Stabilize attack, you know. Counter okay. catcher, so many different options. Boss's Orders does hit the Lost Zone. It's playing those uh, cop the one copy of Counter Catcher going for two boss. I've sort of seen people be back and forth on, on yeah. how you want to play as a more consistent option versus the guaranteed gust of the supporter, and then only being able to play that counter catcher when you're behind on prizes. Indeed. What do you like playing, though? I personally really like the two counter catchers. Exactly. There's a combination of counter catcher plus Roxanne with Sableye spreading out the damage can be huge. I mean, this deck is postered to fall behind. It just it's it's so hard to really expect yourself to get these quick lost impacts and keep the pace up. So, uh, for me, playing Colrus and finding Gust, or playing Roxanne and finding Gust is good. But Isaiah's been playing this deck for a while understands the consistent power of boss's orders. Both have their strengths, both have their weaknesses, and see how this hand looks so far. It does have the Mew VMAX. Going to choose to evolve into uh, the benched Mew VMAX. I think this is smart. I mean, you never know if your opponent's playing something like Choice Belt in their deck, so there's always a weird scenario where you can, like, threaten a weird sort of, like, back and forth, but there will also be the Hisuian Heavy Ball played, so James will get a clear look at all those prize cards. As we mentioned earlier on, earlier on in the game, nothing too relevant. The question now is, 
how do you play this hand out to maximize? So there is the power tablet in hand. I think, I think it was very, very well done by James that he failed the heavy ball. There mm. was a mu V to be grabbed there. However, you don't have to grab it, and he's just trying to clean up his hand right now. His goal is to make sure that with the power tablet, he's able to get a knockout on the Giratina. But as we've mentioned, the lack of choice build could make it a little difficult to deal with the 280 HP of Giratina V-Star. I think that's James's biggest, uh, biggest hurdle right now. If he spends the uh, power tablets knocking out the f this first Giratina. That's three left over, and he needs all three to be able to take that down. Another interesting choice there from James. Chose to attach the double turbo energy to a fresh Mew. Maybe you would like to see that on the Genesect. It kind of just gives you the guaranteed pivot, and that's one more piece that needs. Power tablet's already there. The VMAX and double turbo are there, but you still got to find boss. You still got to find a way to move it, and hopefully do all of that without using your V-Star power so you have that sort of fail-safe, that fallback later on. Does draw into boss off the Fusion Strike system. Ultra Ball as well to thin this hand out and, and uh, just be the Chromatic. So. Yeah. James does here. play three switching cards and gets a head slip. Incredible. So we'll be able to conserve that V-Star that you've been mentioning, how important it is to make sure they have that out against the Path to a Peak eventually. And looking at James's list, is playing the one copy of Switch. Uh, two copies of Switch and the one copy of Escape Rope. Now, in this position, I think Escape Rope is like technically a little bit better to play if you're going to play boss, because if your opponent ever Star Requiems, um, you can attack. But as we just saw off that Heavy Ball, it is in the prize cards for James, so it doesn't have access to that. It will just be the Switch. The boss's orders onto the Garatina V. Now, of course, the Garatina V star is the bigger threat, but it is just so much better to go after the Garatina V because of that lower HP. Indeed. Gives you more bang for your buck, if you will, right? Get more out of your resources. And you still have the three other power tablets to hopefully take down the Giratina V-Star. And right now, James not really missing anything for this turn, right? So every action that is taking place right now is in preparation for next turn. Deck thinning, yeah, getting rid of useless cards like that Battle VIP Pass. The Fusion Energy, which I think James is now banking on the fact that Isaiah is probably not playing Spirit Tomb. If it was available, it certainly would have hit the field by now. So I like that discard. But one card I really wish keeps getting discarded is that Path to the Peak. I, it seems kind of counterintuitive, but yep. I mean, even keeping Battle Pass over it is fine because it at least gives you a Kremomatic out to go ahead and discard. And yeah, that's true. That's I mean, besides true. that, though, some, some minor things here and there, some energies, some stadiums, but uh, besides that, exactly what you want to see here for James. Turn two, boss's orders, knock out Garatina V, taking an early lead, and the clock is immediately on Isaiah. There are seven cards in the Lost Zone, so can get to Star Requiem, but you got to find some backup pieces. you still got to find another Colrus, and I mean, this hand is not looking too great. You do have Mirage Gate, so if the Lost Zone is at 7, which it looks like it is, you could just go and play this, get these energies out, because you need to make sure your draws are as perfect and refined as possible to find Colrus. Whoa, big <laughs> double Colrus off of the concealed cards. Exactly what you want to see here for Isaiah. Now, I think he is holding a Jet Energy, so he could have been able to get to 10 by using all three Comphase and Mirage Gating mm -hmm. to get That's to 10. So I think what's in Isaiah's mind is definitely Kong. finding Mr. another Kong. Giratina, right? He's because he has a guaranteed KO on the MUV Max with the V-Star attack, but Mr. what happens Kong. after? Yeah, well, a field of Comphase Mr. and Greninjas is just not going to be good enough. So very important to make sure Thank that you. not only he accomplishes the one KO, but he has a backup Giratina to fall into potentially. Important Super Rob being played there, too. There were no Grass Energy left in the deck, so able to get those two out, and usually something you don't see, but so important this matchup, putting Garatina V back into the deck, trying to maximize as many outs. Isaiah is playing uh, three copies of Death Ball, and that's it, and I think we've seen one get played and one get lost zone, so I think there's a one more left in the deck, so you've either got to just find the Garatina V as is or find that one extra searching card, if you don't get Garatina V down, yeah, great. Start Requiem can take the knockout, but what is your follow-up attacker after that? What is your follow-up attacker? And if we do get to that point, if James is able to use that Psychic Leap that we talked about in the beginning by having those extra Mews on the bench, then what do you do after, right? The Lost Impact attack is very inefficient in terms of resources. So big Colrus here. We'll have to see if the Giratina is found, but the late-game plan is looking a little difficult for Isaiah here. There is a counter catcher and jet energy. Flower selecting yet to be used, so technically two more ways to search through. Easy choice there also off the Colrus two battle VIP pass. Yep. Straight Pretty to the lost simple. zone. This will bump Isaiah up to 10. So Star Requiem will be online. 
So they can take the prize lead. Ooh. What was that card kept over the... I think it was the Garatina, if I see correctly. Yes, oh. it was. The Garatina in the back of the hand, so can at least get that down. I feel like you always have to bench that here and just bank off the fact that you could put together some more prizes. However, this is sort of where it gets a little bit weird, right? I mean, you put the Garatina V down. That's an easy target for your opponent to boss and knock out. And then from there, you don't have a win con to win the following turn because you have no way to deal 310. Indeed. And now over on James' side, we have seen his hand, and he's holding two power tablets already. And he can V-star for the third, so... He could actually immediately take down that Kiratina V-Star combined with an Iono without even needing to use any of the Genesects, which is really, really impressive here. Yeah, I guess without Choice Belt being in the deck, it is probably just better to go after this Giratina V-Star. But, I mean, assuming Choice Belt is in the deck, then you could save those power tablets right for later. But not an option for James. Uh, this Giratina V-Star is the eminent threat up in the active spot. But here we go. 11 cards in the Lost Zone. We know what's coming, Pablo. Star Requiem. This attack is insane. You just knock out your opponent's active Pokemon, and that being a three-price Pokemon, that's an excellent trade and an excellent advantage for Isaiah. All right. Further thinning the deck with that extra Mirage Gate, but we are definitely going to see this Star Requiem onto the MUV Max. Now, James has the perfect response, and this deck thinning very important by Isaiah, but what will he be able to do with a three-card hand afterwards? The key piece here will be the Psychic Energy. We just saw the Mirage Gate, but no Psychic Energy attached over here. That could be huge. I think the last one might be in the hand, if not in the price cards. Yep, does still have access to it in the hand, so it's not an unavailable resource. And there it is. Star Requiem, UV Max going down. Isaiah answering back. Three prize cards taken. And this is a big turn here for James. Can he find a way to knock out this Garatina V-Star? Maybe combine with a Disruption and Look at this hand. He already has everything. He has the two power tablets. He has the Iono, and that's why I was talking about the Psychic, because this Psychic, if the Iono gets played, is going down to the bottom of the deck. And with two Mirage Gates played, two Nest Balls played, even shuffling the deck could be a problem for Isaiah to get that out of there. And that last power tablet is in the deck, and you're going to draw so many cards here. I think there's a good chance you don't even have to use your V-Star to get this last power tablet, and like we keep saying... Having that last sort of out that Isaiah has, that final trick up your sleeve, the Iono or the Roxanne plus Path, is all James might need to do to keep pace here in this matchup. Now, real like James, I believe, just used Town Store, mm -hmm. right, in order to make sure and double check that everything that he needs is available, which is a very, very smart move. Now, I'll have to see how he sequences this, but he does have the resources available to pull this off. The one thing that you keep mentioning is those Path to the Peaks clogging up the hand. Those are the ones that we would have loved to already see hit the discard a long time ago. See where this Forest Seal Stone goes. I mean, might as well just play it down. Yeah. On Mew V, it doesn't really make a difference, and that's going to sting for Isaiah. A big hand yeah. of resources, especially after you just put a Coldest in the Lost Zone as well, yeah. all going to the bottom of the deck. That Psychic, like you said, the Mirage Gate as well. The last Coldest at the bottom. Yeah. So many good... Even the Poke Gear that I say <laughs> I just got from the prize cards are now at the bottom of the deck. That's not to say that at the top there aren't any good cards, but there's definitely no Coldest, right? And there was a Roxanne prize as well, yeah. so... I, I don't even think that got taken off the prizes. It no, no, yeah, that, that remained there. prized. So here we go. Finds the power tablet off the Iono. Forest Seal Stone, we don't need you at all. We've got everything we need here already. The only thing that's missing would be this last Pokemon to put into play. We do know the Mew V is still prized, but that can get taken. Two cards off Fusion System. Even has the Lost Vacuum in the hand. So whether you get Iono, you still got that in the deck. If not, you've got this here. And at this point, I'm not actually sure if you necessarily need to bench the Genesect. And, and this could be... Okay, Genesect coming down here. How do you feel about that, Pablo? That takes away the option to Psychic Leap reliably, right? You can still do it, but leaving yourself after a Psychic Leap with only one Mew in play, this one, could be a little problematic. So we'll have to see if that ends up affecting. Yeah, it's not going to come into play this turn, but James is going to go down to two prizes. Isaiah might or might not be able to respond with a lost impact. Needs a lot. But if he does, James would love to Psychic Leap, but it would be a very, very psych risky Psychic Leap. Garatina V-Star going down. That's all thanks to three power tablets. Perfect math. 280 damage from the Cross Fusion Strike. Copying Techno Blast. It may be a Mu V-Max deck. 
Genesect is helping out a ton. What do these four cards look like for Isaiah? Comfey coming up into the active spot. Does find the Mirage Gate. Yep. So that can get out the Psychic Energy. Can even find Water Energy out of the deck. There is still one more remaining, so that will give a guaranteed pivot. Nice. There is still technically the way that you could keep the Water just to have the Concealed Cards option, but I guess Jet Energy will also fulfill that, so might as well just put these in play. And you've got one Chorus in your deck. It's kind of up to that to hit those pieces. I mean, the good thing that you have to think about here in Isaiah's position is Isaiah can't lose the game next turn. True. James is out of ways to amplify the damage to take a knockout yep. on this Garatina V-Star. He's thinking just, do I attack this active? And because my opponent put Genesect V into play, have a way to reliably get myself in this game, either by taking out the only attacker or taking three prizes within two turns. Indeed. Now... I just realized that through Town Store, Isaiah always had a way to shuffle the deck. So mm -hmm. I would have loved to see James just get rid of that with the Lost Vacuum that he was holding, especially uh, since he still had the Force of Stone available. But Isaiah just trying to maximize the comp phase, trying to thin the deck as much as possible in order to find that Chorus. And he wow. found <laughs> it off of the first flower selecting the last Chorus the in deck. Last Chorus. These are big five cards, though. Still needs to find Giratina V-Star. There are two remaining in the deck. None in the Lost Zone. Only one played. Not the V, not it's the not V-Star. There. Mirage Gate doesn't do anything right now. There's no energy to put back. Flower Selecting's already been used. Does find Switch cards, so that can allow at least one more to dig. And Battle Pass is 100% a certainty. We see all four Battle Pass now. None of them being played, and Isaiah's going to go into the tank here. What do you keep? What is... Not necessarily a game-impacting card, but what it helps you give yourself a little bit more of a line, and it will be that Mirage Gate kept instead. I think a big thing that Isaiah can do here is he knows there's four Power Tablets gone, right? So there's a Tool card on the MUV Max, there's a Tool card on the MUV. He doesn't know whether there's a Choice Belt yeah. or not, and would you risk it, right? Because you do know they play Lost Vacuum, so you could easily remove that Box of Disaster, attach the Choice Belt, and they do have the Four Seal Stone to search for either card. So is that a risk you take if you don't find the Giratina V in order to attack this Mew V Max? Oh, I mean, it would be a very risky play, but at the level that Isaiah plays, I would not be surprised if he take it if he took that calculated risk. It's tough. I mean, yeah, the tool's on, but you could always lost vacuum the tool yeah. off and put it back Zero on. Zero lost vacuums played so far. It's hard because I feel like through lists I've seen and, and playing with this deck, like 80% of lists, 85 maybe, play at least one copy of Choice Belt still. I would say 95. Yeah, even, even yeah. more than that. So uh, it feels like at least you're not giving yourself the way to lose, but there it it's is. just going to be Garatina coming up. So we will just see the Garatina come up, path the peak be played down, and Isaiah's saying, listen, I'm going to hit this thing for 106 damage, and next turn, whether it's through Counter Catcher or another boss that I have, I'm going to try and just hit this as hard as possible. Indeed, and Isaiah, very smartly, very calculated risk. If you have it, you have it, right? But this is what I need to do in order to either force you to Psychic Leap away the MUV Max and leave yourself vulnerable with a single MUV in play, or you don't, and you attack me with a different MUV Max, and then I'm holding the game-winning boss in my hand. There's so there it the is. Shred. shred, 160 damage. Does James have a way to maybe disrupt the hand again? But it's hard. Isaiah's just sitting on three cards. They're the perfect three cards, but James has no way to know that at this point. Does top deck the switch, so that will reset this Mew. There is a judge in hand. There is the guaranteed stadium bump, and there is the pal pad in hand. So that could bring back Iono if that is the choice. But, I mean... If Isaiah has three cards in hand, it's essentially just kind of trying to take a read on your opponent, right? Yep. Are you holding on to it? Why would you go for this play? I mean, look, if your opponent's going to attack you with this Garatina, they have to have some sort of a follow-up, right? Assuming that this energy was on the Comfey, if they had nothing, they probably would have retreated to maybe see some more cards. That's at least what I'm thinking as I'm sort of just envisioning what you would do in this spot. And it kind of comes down to a few factors. Number one is... What if that Genesect was a Mew on the bench? What if Psychic Leap was a potential? Because, I mean, two prizes is great for Isaiah, but it's not a game-winning strategy. Indeed, and, I mean, Psychic Leap is definitely available, right? But the issue is leaving yourself with one Mew. That's the big problem. So this Genesect is looking a little excessive, and the other Mew was priced, I believe. But yeah. uh, James was taking two prizes, so keeping that bench space open could have been important. So 
I think James's goal is definitely to disrupt as much as possible. And there we see another head slip. Incredible. On fire. Every single head slip coming through. Now, what is the choice? It looks like it will be potentially the Iono. Now, there does need to be a two card combination, especially if this comes through. And I think this is what James is going to do at this point. He's going to say, look, I'm going to. Uh, evolve this bench Mew V into a Mew V Max. Retreat. I'm going to attack your active, and look, if you have it, you have it at this point. Yeah, which is the same as Isaiah did, right? He was oh. like, okay, you have it, you have it. Was that an escape rope played? Uh, no. Not, I think that was the discard off of... Was it? Hold on, let's, let's take a look and we'll see here. It was. Playing the escape rope. Now, I'm not sure I necessarily agree with this play because... Isaiah can pretty confidently just send up this Radiant Greninja. It's a Pokemon that doesn't really have any impact. I mean, maybe Comfe. Oh. I feel like Comfe is maybe. probably your better choice. I but guess in the grand scheme of things, maybe it doesn't really matter. Like, you're going to take a prize card, right? So either you yeah. took a KO the Giratina and you take two prizes in two turns, or you, took it, or you take two prizes sure. and you leave yourself on the boss, right? But... I would have loved to see the Giratina in the active. Because yeah. now, J now Isaiah will be able to dig for that boss or the counter catcher, which is available, with at least one Comfy, with at least this Comfy that has the energy. Yeah, that's the big issue here. So maybe a little bit of an oversight from James. Isaiah going down to three cards. That boss put on the bottom. On the bottom. Does only have the one counter catcher available to, be able to close this game out. And no more town store either to shuffle the deck. Wait, did. Wait, we didn't see the Lost Vacuum get played. So, no. okay, well, I guess now the choice is we're going to play the... Interesting choice there. I mean, you could have just seen the Lost Vacuum get played, yep. drawing cards up, and by keeping your Forest Seal Stone, you give yourself an option, but what do you even grab? Do you grab the Lost Vacuum like you were before? Grabbing the Mew means there's no way to bump this path if there's no win condition the following turn, if, there, if there's no way to knock out this Garatina, which... There's no more modifiers left. There's no way to hit 220 left in James's deck. Indeed, and we've talked about how this path is, it's only affecting James, right? Like, if he, James gets rid of it and just doesn't play another path, that's fine, because Isaiah's losing the only resource right now. And even then, yeah, give yourself access to as many resources as possible. That's the ideal. So, rough situation now for James. Isaiah could find the counter catcher or not, but now James is not holding game in hand. Comfey coming up into the active spot. Big card choice for Isaiah. Looking through the deck, this is a smart choice here from Isaiah. Knows how many cards were on the bottom, put to the bottom from Iono. I believe there were 11 cards. And this is a really Total. interesting choice. Now, as we keep mentioning, Countercatcher is still in the deck. There is a Roxanne in hand here for Isaiah. So the choice here, do you use this flower selecting before you play Roxanne? You give yourself an out to playing boss instead, or do you wait around? We are going to see the Giratina V-Star come down into play. It's not too relevant at this point. It does give you a little bit more HP, so maybe a little bit more of insurance if you want to bring it into the active to end your turn. But how Isaiah navigates through this is big. We already see 30 minutes off the clock here for game one. This has been a long back-and-forth game so far. Isaiah counting in sec. I believe it's 11 cards, if I'm not mistaken. Might be 10 with the four in the hand. I'm pretty sure Isaiah is calculating... Um, how close he is to the counter catcher. Does it immediately slam it? So I'm guessing yeah, you, it you wasn't found. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what? He has it. Wait, is that? No, no, it's Pokegear. No, he has it. Oh, he, he found it. He oh, there it. you go. He did find it. Big find there off of the Comfe. Flower selecting counter catcher, taking the knockout. Isaiah playing to every out, finding the pieces needed, and a long game one going to him, going up 1 0 here in Swiss round five. What a back and forth game, that Mew V being prized. And that last turn sequencing definitely could have been just hitting into the Giratina, right? Get rid of the path, or maybe keep the path, if you will, yeah? But play it after you Viono, because you're going to find another one. You have more copies, you'll be able to find them. Get rid of the path, and you're going to be good to go. You shut down the, Gear the Greninja, right? Draw, which is what you want to do, but you leave the Giratina in the active, so no flower selecting for opponent, or they have to find resources to flower select. Yeah, and not to sort of reflect on what can't be changed, but that counter catcher would have never been found if there was no flower selecting to exactly. be able to be used. So, a lesson there for James, for sure. We'll reflect on that going into the next game. We'll at least get to go first. That is a big advantage, but yep. looking back on this, 
It was all about Isaiah Bradner and his Garatina V-Stars. Getting that first one into play, Star Wrecking would take the knockout, but James had the excellent response. Able to play three Power Tablet, two already in the hand, finding the last off Iono. But Isaiah, despite being put under all that pressure, remained calm, took the risk to attack with that Garatina V in the shred, and it paid off excellently, taking those last three prizes, a perfect 3-3 three and three to go up 1-0 here in round number five. I feel like Isaiah was always right on the edge, right? His Pokemon kept getting KO'd, James was applying so much pressure, and Isaiah, off of these low-card Ionos, both his and his opponents, it was just like, ugh, so, so close, and at the very end, the Countercatcher was fine. Isaiah was able to find a cold risk of Flower Select. Then this Countercatcher. Some pretty good draws for him in that game. So 18 minutes left in this game. And that was a long game number one. But, I mean, both of these decks, they just have such long turns, right? With Fusion Strike System, you're always thinning it out. You're searching the deck. You're drawing cards. And you've got lots of tough decisions to make on the Flower Selecting. Is there a different approach, given the time circumstance, that you go for as James in this next game? I mean, you really have to rush out, chase down those the Pokemon. I feel like I, I would love to see him be more aggressive with the discarding of the path with peaks. There were definitely leftover cards logging off his hand. But other than playing faster, I don't think there's anything you can really do because he targeted the V Pokemon last game anyways as well, right? Except at the very end. And I feel like that at the very end might have been what caught him game. That very close game one. Yeah, like it was back and forth. It could it was anyone's game at that point. Truly down to the wire. That's the best part about the Pokemon TCG. You never know what's gonna happen between these. James will at least be able to kick things off going first, I'm sure. Uh, every new VMAX player wants to get things started and try and just build that hand up so far. Isaiah going second. I'm not sure there's really much difference you take in that in your game plan. Again, it's all about getting those cards in the lost zone, but these opening hands are going to be important. Do we see battle VIP passes? Do we see Pokemon? And looks like the hand is not so powerful here for James. I don't know if I saw any battle VIP pass. We'll still be able to draw even more cards, but I mean, every mulligan that comes down is just more and more time off the clock. And I mean, to put it frankly, that's in favor of Isaiah, who's up 1 0 so far in the set. Yeah, that is definitely something that's going up against James here. The multiple mulligans will benefit him in terms of. Getting that extra card, right? Maybe improve his setup, but the time being you stop right now. We have 20 minutes to start off, and I think we're now down to 15 with all these mulligans. Prize is not too bad there for James. Does it have a power tablet in the prizes? It is towards the bottom, but it's one card you never want to see put away. Now, there is the potential here to, again, put on that turn two pressure. We saw that Isaiah had sort of that extra turn. But if you don't really start Requiem maybe one turn earlier, be a big difference as let's find a basic Pokemon. James will get an extra Mulligan card to grab and uh, prizes not too bad. The Garatina V Star is really the only thing that sort of sticks out to me because this matchup specifically you want to rush to get those out and evolved. Yeah, certainly. Now we see James off to races. Uh, solid start has a not playable Chromatic and the other two energies are also clogging up his hand a little bit, so won't be able will be able to draw one card if he plays down the. Tool card. I don't like playing it down on the Genesec though. I think it would be much better on the Mew to keep those Genesecs open for the future um, for a Seal Stone. This hand is completely unplayable. Three energy, Kramomatic passing things back. You play six energy and you've already found <laughs> four of them. That's insane. No battle pass, not what you want to see. Is uh, This is the sort of the most important part of playing these Lost Zone decks is this first turn sequencing. We saw Isaiah had Nest Ball in hand, but chose not to play it in favor of trying to draw into more of those basic Pokemon. Will be the first flower selecting, does get rid of Psychic Energy. And wow, there's really not much going on, but actually did find Colrus off of the flower selecting, it seems. So again, not playing Nest Ball, trying to just find as many basics as possible off these five cards from Colrus's experiment. Now we are seeing Isaiah take a look at those five cards. Wow. These are... <laughs> Not the cards you want to see. No Pokemon, in fact. Not getting rewarded at all for keeping that Nest Ball in the hand. And now you kind of have a decision. What do you want to grab off your only Pokemon search? You've used your Flower Selecting. You still have your attachment, but you get one Pokemon here. Which one is it going to be? I mean, I don't think now is the time for a BC King. I and mean, then Isaiah is going to be very thorough with his deck search. I feel like you have to go for Comfy. If you go into a BC King, you're just making it easier for your opponent to beat you, right? Mm. You're accelerating their win condition. And uh, with no backup Giratinas, there's no 
point, really. So you'd rather just take it cool, one prize to your opponent, and then move on from there. Greninja could be another option as well. There is sort of a niche situation with Greninja where if you do put it in the active spot for some reason, it does not get knocked out by a Psychic Leap for 70, but with the Jet Energy in hand, it seems like you might as well get more use out of the Jet Energy and put that into the active instead. Yeah, certainly. Now, interesting that James's hand is not great, but because he does have both Fusion Energies, we could see a Psychic Leap KO in a Confei next turn. <laughs> that would be pretty funny to see. And it's good to just not put the VMAX in play. You give yourself more options down the line, and yeah. less of those three prize Pokemon you put into play, the more you sort of want to force Isaiah into that not 3-3 three, three strategy, because we saw how efficient it was to just over the course of four attacks, or three attacks even, just take six prizes, and that's what you want to see as a player. So it will be Comfey grabbed. Here we go. Two cards off flower selecting. If no Giratina V come down, it's essentially it's like resetting a turn because it's going to be even easier, as we saw, to take those knockouts onto the 220 HP. Jet Energy in, bringing this Comfey up. What are these two cards? I feel like if it's passed, you probably slam it down. We've seen Isaiah be extra thorough through all these decisions. Yep. It's and a psychic a energy. Psychic. Wow. Both players drawing a lot of energies. So it will be the path down, but uh, with how James's hand looks right now, at least has like the fusion and a big top deck there finds the judge. This will reset the big hand size that Isaiah put together, leaving him with just one Pokemon in play because the perfect math from double fusion energy, psychic leap, 70 damage, goodbye Comfey. Yeah, so I mean, you don't need a Mew VMAX, right? What you need is to take one prize card. How you do it, that doesn't matter. And with no threat of Kiratina, no threat of even Cramorant, right? Four cards in the Lost Zone it could be problematic, but I mean, there's a chance Isaiah doesn't find another basic Pokemon out of this charge and just gets locked out of this game thanks to this charge. So we'll have to see what he draws. It's a low chance, but there is a chance that happens. Yeah, and with Path being in play, a card like Radiant Greninja won't bail you out. I mean, I would even like James to just not play Path. You don't really need to dig with Genesect here. Just take the knockout. Nothing's really threatening you. And I mean, I wouldn't even play the Crim. I, I would probably just like hold this hand yeah, out. I mean, hold. Rope is a potentially good card if your opponent just puts Giratina V into play. It essentially acts as a boss to gust it up. And you see James sort of tapping the cards on the table, thinking, what else do I need, right? This sort of is like your checklist you go with as a Pokemon player. Okay, do I have my energy attachment? Yes. Can I attack? Yes. Can I take prizes? Yes. Yeah, and all good. No need to good. overplay cards, exactly. Comfy gone. I say I just gonna see his cards. Does find a battle VIP pass, which is obviously not helpful. Does have a stable eye though, but <laughs> not much else. I don't think Scratch is the winning play, Pablo. <laughs> I'm no expert, but here we go. Two cards off this. And it's a Giratina V. I mean, that has to be your grab. I think it's going to sort of play it up. I mean, it's, it's a pretty obvious choice. you got to get rid of the water to keep the Garatina, but... Yeah. Uh, what else do you do this turn? Is this... Like, you can't even Abyss Seek because you're just going to reset yourself back another turn, but Ooh. I think there's no other option with how poor this hand is for Isaiah. Comfey going down is the same thing, essentially, as Abyss Seeking, and you at least get some more cards off of that. But here it is. Put in the prime position. Abyss Seeking. Training putting card cards in the Lost Zone, but at the cost time. of putting this two prize Pokemon Training in play with master, no great response attacker for the following turn. Indeed, Isaiah taking this once again calculated risk. What he saw from James last turn was very weak. So he might be banking on, okay, maybe my Giratina actually survives, right? And James's hand is not super impressive, but it's holding on Iono, has that chromatic that he did not play. We could see a quick KO here and with 10 minutes left on the clock and wow, another big top deck, the Forest Seal Stone. Doesn't even need to play the Iono Show now. Show me another heads here. Oh Shh. my, James says, I'm only going to get the card out been playing four computer searches the entire deck, just finding <laughs> every card that's needed. I mean, at this point, you kind of, I think, just evolve into Mew VMAX. You even have Iono in hand, so you might as yeah. well, again, try and preserve this Forest Seal Stone, play Iono, and all you need to find here off of this is either the modifier, and actually, I mean, maybe Wait. it's just not as simple just to find the Lost Vacuum to just give yourself more of a potential to draw into this. I, mean, I don't hate that either, necessarily, but you I'm have not quite the, sure. You have the guaranteed Mew VMAX. I feel like what I don't want to see James play is the Iona. You have to read that Isaiah's draw from Judge was not very powerful, yeah. right? So I would really love it if he didn't play that Iona. I would also understand if he did, mm -hmm. right? Just to give himself the most amount of cards available to make sure that he finds the two pieces that he does need right now. Um, he has one guaranteed with the Forest Seal Stone, but he still needs Mew VMAX and Power Tablet to get this KO. I mean, in this position is sort of how I'm seeing it is 
you kind of don't really even care what Isaiah does for the rest of the game, right? True, you take true. this knockout, Garatina V comes down, boss, take a knockout onto it, and then you're at one prize, right? What a Pokemon <laughs> draw! <laughs> wow, incredible fusion strike system by Genesec. Just, I mean, I feel like we might not see that I don't know because of how good this is. And are we gonna see another? I flip it again. I need to see it. Oh, what what has this been? Five it's a so computer far. Computer search. Yeah, this is computer <laughs> search over here. That card shouldn't even say flip and hit tails. Okay, <laughs> we jinxed it. Cast a yeah, curse. We Commentator jinxed curse. It. <laughs> Sorry, James. We jinxed it. <laughs> and you see our players sort of laughing about it too. Like, come it's on. The first mean. tails. Yeah, we've seen. I would love, yeah, yeah, just love to see this lost vacuum. Get rid of the uh, box of disaster. Yeah, keep drawing, maximize your draw. Just don't play that Iono. That's and like the number one rule this turn. This has been a great adjustment, James. Really not valuing those paths in this game, and you see it paying dividends. Having all these cards that you want so far in your hand. Here we go. Four cards off of this. All right, what do we see? Oh, neither card found, yeah. though. Still, I think we're going to have to yeah. see the Iono. Yeah, but this is kind of no tough. tough here. you got to play the Iono, and you've got no way to draw. So you've got to find either the UV Max or the Power Tablet. So if you, you can find one of those two, stone. then yep. Forest Seal Stone, of course. There is the potential to find both of those. But yeah. I mean, listen, we've been, we've been seeing a lot of great draws here for James. If, <laughs> if there's one more game to close things out, we'll have to see it here. Five cards. Do we see it? We do. We do see an Ultra Ball to be able to fetch that Mew Max and then could try to flip once again. But I feel like that would be a little overdoing it. Yeah. I think you'd want to keep the Lost Vacuum in case another path comes down. Okay, if James hit heads on the previous chromatic, I think you kind of just kind of got to play to the I'm going to flip eight heads. And yeah. I got the best card in the format in, in my <laughs> deck right now. So. There's a Mew Max. James about to, to flip over his V Star. Going to go grab that Power Tablet and eliminate this Kiratina from the board, leaving Isaiah very bare bones. Six minutes on the clock with a plus returns. If Isaiah ends up benching another Kiratina, I feel like it's possible for James to close out this game, even if it doesn't, depending on how quick James plays out the rest of his turns, because like Isaiah either plays to not lose at this point or tries to win by benching another Kiratina and then somehow taking a knockout on a Mew Max. On two Mew Max, sure. rather. So as we said, it's sort of like the worst case scenario. You give Isaiah a fresh new card, a hand of six. There's no Colrus in here yet, but of course does have lots of ways to dig through the deck. We see the Pokey Gear card that Isaiah's been playing in this Giratina deck for quite some time now after since he sort of has pivoted around throughout decks, of course. Played Palkia for the 2022 season, a variety of decks last year, and sort of found his home with this Giratina deck. Yeah, has been sticking with it for this whole season, it seems, so far. I don't think he has played as many events mm -hmm. as he has uh, in the past, but I feel like Giratina is his, is his go-to deck. And other than Countercatcher, the deck didn't change much from Paradox Rift. Now, Isaiah has built up a pretty sizable loss zone, thanks to, as well, that Lost Vacuum putting the Path the Peak in yep. play uh, in the loss zone. So uh, this is will put Isaiah up to 10 cards, did attach and retreat, so... Sableye can at least start putting some pressure onto these Pokemon. It does find another Giratina V star into the Lost Zone. It's really thinking, I'm going to have one last out to get there. Now, these are a big seven cards, though, off this Pokey Gear. Do we see Colrus as a way to dig through? And we do. Colrus found off the seven cards off Pokey Gear. Will allow Isaiah to dig a little further. Maybe for something like that Mirage Gate to get an attack going. Does also need to find a pivoting option because as Comfey has retreated to be able to use both of these flower selectings. I think a pretty big tell that Isaiah is probably not going to focus too much on winning this game and rather trying to stop James from winning uh, in time would be the second Giratina that just hit the Lost Zone. I mm -hmm. think that's a pretty big tell that now Isaiah only has access to one, right? How can you finish out a game with one Giratina V-Star? It's yeah, really it's difficult to take six prizes off of a single one, so... We'll have to see how he plays out. He has counter catchers, right? He has bosses orders to try and make James whiff. That's his goal right now. Try to make James not attack him as much as possible. So Comfey comes down. Colrus will join as well. Lost zone, plenty of cards. So again, I mean, let's look at the clock here. We're, we're just under four minutes left in time. It's going to take James another three turns to win this out. I mean. You kind of, these players sort of have a general idea, right? Time is winding down, but if you're not aware of the clock, you kind of have to have this instinct of, I don't need to fusion system and, and draw everything at this point. If my opponent's not going to put Pokemon in play and play to their optimal strategy, I'm just going to attack, take prizes, and 
that's going to be enough for me to win this game. Now, Dos lost on another Colrith and a Jet. Dos keep the, the path to a peak. Dos have that counter catcher. So I think that's going to be Isaiah's strategy, especially now that James in this game, as opposed to the previous game, has already lost two lost vacuums. So that could be pretty big. Doesn't know that James is holding one already, but that could be a way that Isaiah tries to mm. make sure that he's able to stall out James and prevent him from attacking continually over and over. So Mirage Gate getting played. Sableye powered up. Ten cards in the Lost Zone. More than enough. Uh, I believe more now with that Colrus being played, but the ten card limit has been hit. So we will be seeing a Lost Mine into play. Switch as well. Uh, but actually, just going to continuously use Comfey to just flower selecting, take more actions, battle pass going to the Lost Zone. Do you even attack here if you're Isaiah? I mean, and what does putting damage on the board do? And yeah, it's just going to be a pass over. So, I mean, as James, uh, what do you really even do at this point? We'll play Featherball, does still have access to abilities. And I mean, with two Mew VMAX in play, it becomes even easier to knock out these low HP Pokemon because now Max Miracle is an option. Uh, Techno Blast, or rather Cross Fusion, Copy Max Miracle is an option, but it's got to be just sort of put the gas on, and yeah. there will be a way to slow this hand down for both players. That does, does put Isaiah's hand back in, both players drawing four cards, but I mean, there's two minutes left. So as long as James can take a knockout this, this turn, turn without, before two minutes before, go, before the turn is over, then right? he can he win this to, game. Yeah, indeed. Now, I love this power tablet being played because James knows he doesn't need that, right? He just needs to attack three times. There's three good enough targets. Didn't find a double turbo. That's a big card that he's missing. So getting rid of that, I would oh, play the, the power <laughs> tablet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is so tough. I play mean, you, you kind of just got to yeah. play everything here. So, I mean, you got to just lost vacuum, get rid of the uh, judge. Probably the, that's the judge a, that's a that, Chromomatic that's target, true. right? Yeah, so need to get rid of the judge. Yeah. All right, three more cards. There's a double turbo. Two double turbos. So Perfect. that's really good for James to potentially retreat. Now, I think Isaiah is building up to a Roxanne counter catcher. Yeah. Uh, path to a peak play. And we do the Max Miracle, and there's a knockout. So James will have enough turns to close this out. The question is, will he be able to after Isaiah disrupts his hand? Isaiah drawing for turn. Most likely will be turn zero. But, I mean... Just kind of playing through the actions, playing with how he can. But, I mean, Isaiah does not have a way to win this game, really. Not in, a, in a reasonable not. sense. I mean, you've got the Comfey in play. You can put more cards in the Lost Zone. But uh, Sableye, it's not going to cut it for you, especially when you've only got one in play, especially when these VMAX Pokemon have 310 HP. And we could get in there with the spinning attack, though, for some style points. Listen, I... <laughs> Okay, Pablo, you played you played this deck with Rayquaza before. Did you spinning attack uh, when you top aided that regionals? Uh, not at that regionals, but the amount of times I've used spinning attack. And you know what? It's very common as of late because of Roaring Moon. I think Roaring Moon EX is uh, like they self KO against Aguratina V Star. Bop goes the spinning attack from Comfey, <laughs> and that's how you take knockouts with your single prizer. Sometimes I think it's a pretty cool way to do so. so Isaiah just playing cards out. There is already the Roxanne and the Countercatcher in hand, so it looks to me like a prime Genesect target to bring up. It does have boss's orders. I mean, you don't even need to grab anything here because we're just gonna You're see gonna those Roxanne. two cards getting played. So Countercatcher up the Genesect and Roxanne being played. And we did also see the Lost Vacuum get played as well. I think you've got, how many Lost Vacuum are down? I haven't seen the Town Store get played down yet, so that is still a potential. And I believe there are still one or two lost vacuum left, but I mean, this is what it's going to come down to. Isaiah has pretty much said, listen, I'm going to make it as hard as possible for you to win the game. I'm not trying to win myself at this point, but I'm going to bring these Pokemon up. I'm going to try and disrupt you. Can you attack two turns in a row? And for me, this is the big turn here. If you can get this Genesect out of the active spot, you leave Isaiah with just one card potential to get in there, and that being boss's orders means your hand also can't get disrupted the same turn. You can keep those cards and give yourself a bigger out. Indeed, now we have the flowers like <laughs> the triple energy comfy is so funny to look at. But it's, it's like there's going to be like a Thornton or something. It's going to yeah. pop out, Garantina <laughs> V, uh, Star Requiem, you're done. Get out of here. Now, if time weren't an issue, right? Yeah. If we if we hadn't run out of time already, I feel like I'd say I would definitely have a chance at winning this game, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if James gets stuck enough turns, right? You can lost mine eventually uh, enough times to make sure that 
James, uh, like that you take six prizes, right? Yeah. You can make this comeback. How realistic, how realistic that is before James draws another way to retreat, right? Whether it's a double turbo, a switch, an escape rope, not super likely depending on James's uh, size of the deck, but definitely a possibility. So here we go. Three cards here for James. Yeah. This is what it comes down to. Finds the double turbo energy that will allow this Genesec to retreat. And all of a sudden, it's going to be on Isaiah again to trap a Pokemon up. UV Max comes up. That can copy the Max Miracle on the bench. So you've got now this active that can attack. You've got the benched UV Max that can attack. Path does stay in play, though. Doesn't really draw anything impactful. Now, what is there off of this card? There's no boss's orders. Mm. There, that only one copy of Countercatcher yep. could come back to bite Isaiah in this game. It's all going to come down to this. I don't think there's any way to put beneficial cards in the deck. I don't think there's Pokey Gear left, really. But that could be a potential card you find off this. But here we go. Flower selecting two cards. What do we see? It's Escape Rope and a Giratina V. That's not what you necessarily want to see. Well, oh, no, Leah. definitely not. But Giratina V is another option okay. that Isaiah has, right? Because yeah. he can retreat into that Giratina mm. and hope that James doesn't there's have no power either a tablet. boss yeah. or Escape Rope or Power Tablet. And I do believe all four Power Tablets have been exhausted already, so... Oh, have all four been gone? I believe so, yeah. Wow. I, I'm not 100% sure. Um, there were definitely two used up in that turn where we were digging for that double turbo, mm -hmm. so it could be that. And the double Giratina actually plays around the escape, the escape rope. rope. That's true. So, boss's orders could be the only card that James can actually top deck, or a lost vacuum. You see the Here pass. Show me the turn. magic. Double turbo, I believe. <sighs> so, if it had been the boss... James might have won, but I don't think there's a way for James to take a knockout here. No. So that was a big flower selecting. Put it, I mean, Rope is another card that you give it out yeah. to, but sort of playing those Giratina down early, I think we'll maybe get to see one more search in the deck, but doesn't matter at this point. Two of these Giratina Vs standing in play the last turn of time. I mean, Two you can retreat ten. into this 10 Two damage ten. short. With the cross fusion strike 200. and 10 damage short is 10 damage too little. James unable to close out this game. Isaiah Brander winning this series 1 0. A long game one. Not playing to the win game two, but listen, it's how you got to play to win. That's how Isaiah played this series out, going to advance to 5 0. Still undefeated here at San Antonio. Indeed, 5 0 record for Isaiah. Very close games. Both of them, yeah, and yeah, I mean, towards the end, that is how you have to play, right? The, the time is uh, part of the rules, and Isaiah definitely needed to make sure that James didn't attack enough times. Look, I mean, we could have a conversation about BO1 versus BO3 and sort of, I mean, yeah. look, with the way the format has devolved, with EX Pokemon, with single prizers coming back into the format, it's hard to play three, I mean, one on average, 17 minute games of Pokemon each. I mean, it's hard to be able to do that. And uh, we see with this sort of back and forth matchup where each player is drawing tons of cards, setting things up, how back and forth it could be. It's a long game one there for Isaiah. Did get those 10 cards in the Lost Zone quickly. Garatina V Star came in, lost Regnum to take this knockout. And I think for James, it was that one last crucial turn. Everything was sort of to the T with as best positioned as possible. Of course, those three power tablets played on this turn to take the knockout but it was that escape rope to allow that Comfey to use flower selecting that allowed Isaiah to sort of dig through the deck just enough, find the counter catcher, and bring up this damage to you. Indeed, that triple power tablet to knock out that Giratina V-Star was looking like James's best way to win, but it did feel like at the end, things crumbled for James. The lack of the MUV and Isaiah was able to find that counter catcher of all that clutch flower selecting to close out that first game. And then we have those mulligans. All those mulligans, I feel like, could have, if we hadn't had so many mulligans, we might have had enough time to uh, to see the the final of yeah. that game, the, those final turns. I mean, if, if there's one more turn in that game, I mean, you attack the Garatina V yeah. and then... I mean, Isaiah could retreat, yeah, right, to the other one. True. So maybe two more turns, right? Yeah. But, I mean, that's how much time? Two, three minutes, perhaps? Definitely, like, we definitely lost more time with the mulligans right there. It's part of the game. It's part of how Pokemon TCG goes. Sort of this downtime in between of getting set up and playing through. But that worked to Isaiah's advantage. Winning this series 1-0. Going to 5-0. And uh, really just proving to people. I mean, this sort of Garatina V-Star deck in itself has been a debate amongst the community of, is this a strong archetype? 
is it leak? I mean, look, we saw in that series, there's no denying the fact that Star Requiem is the most powerful attack in the game. I mean, there's a reason it's a once per game effect, just yep. knock out your opponent's active Pokemon, but the elements around slow starts and relying off of your path comeback mechanics do bring into some questions on whether this is a deck that could keep up with a lot of the forces, especially that have incredible end game potential like Gardevoir, or really fast early games decks like Maridon. Yeah, certainly. Giratina is one of those decks where like it has everything you could possibly want, right? Damage counter placement, bench damage threat with Greninja, one hit KOs with Star Requiem, also with Lost Impact, it's a humongous amount of damage. You have a very powerful Cramorant early lead to potentially take a knock on turn one, but can you actually get to that point? That's always a question with Giratina V-Star. And we saw Isaiah did manage to get there on game one, not quite on game two.